Hey everyone, so in this video I'll just show you guys how I wrote this game in C programming language and I pretty much wrote the engine everything and it was painful. All I used was structures and linked lists and pointers and pointers to pointers. So let me just show you how the game looks like. I'm just gonna run it. So you have these enemies coming from the top and I'm using the D key to move to right and then I'm using the F key to fire. They have AI in them so they will actually dodge the bullet and whoa and if they hit the as you can see okay i got that guy and i'm over because yeah so i'm gonna play it again all right so let's see so, so if they hit the bottom line then that means they win and you can see the score at the bottom well, look at that guy he dodged the bullet wow he's really smart all right so i got him um how about this guy ah, i didn't get wow he dodged me too i'm gonna see if i can get this guy so so these bullets are going in a way those two see look at him he's dodging it what <laughs> all right so let's see if i can get this guy i got him yay how about these two here let's see the bullets are moving in so the, there's no graphics actually it's just like whoa did you see that how about this guy all right so i got him that's cool all right, so the game starts. Uh, I know the, the extension says CPP, but it's actually C. So you start in the main, and uh, all I have is just a game run function. So I'm just going to go into game run. And um, you start off with a random seed. And this just makes sure every time we run, we get a random uh, seed. And uh, so what I have is a sprite pipeline. A sprite pipeline is uh, nothing but a link list where I keep track of all the um, all the sprites. So I could create an array, but an array is static and a link list is dynamic. So I can dynamically add sprites and remove sprites as they come and go, which is why I use link list. Um, then you have this other uh, structure, the sprite. So a bullet, an enemy, a hero, they're all sprites, right? And every sprite has a position. They have a character. A character is just an enum. And I'm just gonna go back. And then you have the how the look of a sprite, the score it takes with it, the direction, the life, the speed, and blah, blah, blah. All right, so then we insert sprite. We come in here and start with our hero and insert that in a, into our pipeline. And we just call it hero. As you can see here, it's here. And here I create the enemies. So it's kind of the same idea. I just go through at random positions and I create the sprites and that's how the enemies look. You come over here and then uh, do the positioning and all. Now here is the main game loop. So the game loop, the first thing we do is um, the process any input the from user. So you know any key the user has pressed. So it could be the A key which is for the left and the D key is for the right and F is for fire. And then we check if the game is over. Game over is if you know the hero died or somebody pressed the Q key. Then we also go and update the sprite pipeline. So you just continuously go through the sprite pipeline. And um, if it's an enemy, you update their position. If it's a bullet, you need to update that position because the enemies come down, the bullets go the other way. So if I just go in, all we're doing is just subtracting or adding the, the direction or the position, sorry. And uh, if the user has pressed the fire key, then we create the fire sprite and we give it some speed and insert it into our um, link list. And uh, you know, we, now why is it false? Because I don't want the user just keep spamming the, um, the this fire. So we just wanna make sure, you know, it's um, it's it's within reason. Uh, and then also we see if a sprite is alive or not. And how do you know if a sprite is alive? Well, if they don't have any lives, then I guess they're dead. And if they are, then we remove them from our uh, link list or from our queue which is why I was using that, um, uh, the array and so that, uh, you know, they can be easily removed. The other thing with linked list is if you remove it from a linked list, you just move the pointer. But if you have an array, then you have to shuffle all the elements. Let's say you remove something in the middle and you got to shuffle all the, sorry, you got to shift all the elements to the right, to the left. And I didn't want to handle uh, that. And then you do, oh, here's the AI part. So the AI part is simple, but it works for me. I only want to do the AI on the enemy. I don't want to do any AI on the bullet. 
So the reason I the, the way I do it is I just uh, do this distance thing where I calculate the um, position between the sp uh, bullet and the enemy, and if that is within a certain uh, you know threshold, and then I also make sure that the bullet is actually aimed towards the enemy. Because I don't want an enemy over here doing AI because just because the bullet is here. So I want to make sure that the bullet uh, X position. Um, they are zero um, and then here I just give it a well, if that is true then we just do a random direction and give the sprite that direction uh, and we also want to make sure that we stay within the bounds of our gaming area I don't want to go outside of that it's pretty small for us but uh, yeah that helps and then also we check for collision so let's say the bullet hit the enemy or the enemy hit the bottom line then we take our actions accordingly so you go through your um you go through your uh, sprite pipeline and you just check if any collision has occurred and the way we do is we we see that if uh, you know if it's a if the sprite number a let's say is enemy and is the sprite number b is a bullet and the distance between them is zero that means you know we have collided and if that's true, then we, you know, give ourselves a score of one, and we um, subtract one from the um, from the enemy. So P head, um, if you if you know pointers, so the hero exists at the head of the link list. So we add one to it, and from the sprite that has collided, we remove one from it. Now doing it this way will kill the bullet and will kill the enemy at the same time. So that kind of works very well. And you also have to count if the if we uh, cross the boundary, meaning the the enemy has crossed the boundary. If they have, then we just take the hero and subtract one from its life, and that happens. So if the sprite was a an enemy, then only we do it. We don't want to do it if a bullet crosses the boundary, right? Only want to do it when the, the enemy does it. And then we just render the sprite pipeline, update the status, which is the status of our um, the score at the bottom. You do a timer update. Now, if you don't do the timer update, the game is going to run super fast. So all you do is take the current time, and then you are going to say, you know, when are you going to expire? And if the difference, if that is less than zero, then that means you have expired, and you just get the next time. If not, then you just continue counting, and that way you have a nice frame rate uh, with, where the game is actually playable. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know I like it's a lot of it's a lot of work actually going through this. Uh, I just need I just did this as an experiment just to see how hard it is. If I had to write a game from scratch, no graphics, honestly, um, in C program language, uh, and it was fun, but at the same time very challenging. And you learn a lot by doing these kind of projects. So, if you guys want like a detailed video, maybe of just going in each file one by one, like the, I have the level. Uh, that creates different levels and then I have the engine. Engine is pretty mm, pretty simple. Then let me know and uh, I can uh, make a video on that. But uh, subscribe and uh, bye for now.